Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game changing. Hello and welcome to Future Proof. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I continue this series, um, asking the question, how to? And uh, hopefully I'm just uh, covering some business ideas and uh, things that can help enhance our lives and, and uh, maybe get more of what we want um, in these changing times. And uh, today I want to, and it might actually take a couple of programs to cover this, I want to really look in De some detail uh, about how to form a, uh, a, a proactive functioning uh, team. Very often we can use them for project teams and, uh, and I'm going to be looking at the different things that are needed and, and as you know if you've been following this series at all um, I factor emotionally intelligent thinking into all the subjects that I cover so um, it's about using if you like um, EQ to help enhance team performance which will help you get what you want. So I hope you enjoy the programme and, and this is basically what um, I'm going to be covering. We're going to be looking at how to improve business through using emotional intelligence, understanding the key elements of successful teams. Why are they so important? There's that great saying by Richard, somebody I think it is, um, if you want to go high, go alone. If you want to go far, then we need to go together. How to build that team. You know, very, very often in business, business owners um, or managers, you know, people heading up uh, responsibility uh, will often go back to the same team, regardless of exactly the task of the team. And what I advocate is you need to look at the task, the outcomes that you want from that team, and then choose members specifically who have those skills to bring about the best outcome that you want and, and to avoid automatically going to the same people. And the other thing in that category too is to maybe change the leadership. A different, um, you need different skill sets to head up different um, teams that you, you want to sort of drive through investigation, problem solving, uh, and also then um, how to's at the end of it. You know, we have found what the problem is, we have found what the solution is, but now we need to draw up all those actions and the key points so that everybody knows how to get to whatever it is that you want to get to. So learning how to run that successful team and how to prepare a one page plan. And for anybody who's ever worked with us, you'll know that we only have like a one page plan. That's for a business, that's for a department, that's for an individual. And if the organization is huge, then you can then obviously bring in cascading one page plans. So you can have the big business one page plan and then supporting um, departments can then have their one page plan uh, sitting underneath the overall business plan. So um, it's a bit like a family tree. You then lay out the one page plans with the the business plan heading up the top and then each one page plan as it cascades down all of it should be feeding back up into the overall plan so everybody's buying in to exactly the same overall outcome for the good of all within that business and their one page plans are where they are taking responsibility for their role um, in, in producing that outcome. And it makes me think um, of, is it Henry Ford? And he was walking through NASA and there was a guy sweeping the floor and, the, and the, he said to the guy, what are you doing? And a previous answer from somebody else, they had just talked about the job that they were doing. But this particular guy who was sweeping the floor, when he was asked, what is it you're doing? He turned and smiled and said, I'm getting a rocket onto the moon. And, and in other words, he had bought into the whole idea. He knew what his role was. So as he was sweeping the floor, he wasn't thinking of that as his 
task. He saw himself as a cog, if you like, um, amongst many that were actually all coming together for that one purpose, which was to get a spaceship on the moon. And that's the kind of psychology that we want to really enhance, feed, nurture um, uh, and celebrate when we see it in a business. Uh, so let's start with the definition of a team. A team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually. Now that's a really important um, point, mutually accountable. So it means that it, going back to um, the floor sweeper, um, they are just as accountable as the people, for example, designing instruments. That's this kind of psychology that we really want to bring into a business because, you know, it's like family life. It's, it's like, you know, even if you watch ants, you watch, you know, other creatures, you take one away and um, the end result will never be as good because that one's been taken away so it just reinforces that every single person is very very important regardless of whether you're out front round the back you look at a television crew a studio you know none of that could function without every single person being there so if you think of the team they have complementary skills if you think of a tv studio and they are all mutually accountable and that really addresses blame culture as well so a really important definition there and then we look at, you know, what is um, a team? And there's the, it's called the Adair Circle here. And it's when we need to address um, the needs of a team, the tasks, the team needs, and then the individual needs. And it's only once those have been addressed that you can really start thinking of the word team because until people feel that um, their individual needs are met and the team needs are met and indeed you know that we know what the task needs are they don't feel they feel like a dysfunctional team and we don't want that we want them to feel like a cohesive team and it's those skills that are needed so um, I really commend that to you and I'm gonna just kind of leave you looking at it just for a minute so that um, you can read through uh, that so businesses can improve obviously through team. The key to business improvement is involvement and commitment of your people. You know, very often um, if you look at what the highest outgoings are of a business, depending on the size of it, it's usually building or people. And of course, the larger the business, then people definitely um, draw the biggest um, expenses from a business. So we really need to make sure that we look after them. And you, you know, if you were buying a second-hand computer, for example, then you would make sure that it was functioning to the highest level, or you would, you know, go back to factory settings. It's that kind of thing. So how can we ensure that our people are functioning to their highest capability levels and not the minimum? And that's all about investing in them. That's all about them being part of the journey. And um, also there's accountability and consequences. So discipline sits in there as well. And just as a sideline, if I had to say some of the things that I've noticed um, about UK businesses is very, very often we have um, the rules, the regulations, if you like, the guidelines. Businesses generally are very good at buying into their people. But the biggest thing I see missing very often are consequences and you know we're not very very good at driving through to say if this doesn't happen or if you repeat for example that bad you know, or that uh, unacceptable um, behavior or, or whatever it is then the outcomes will be and we're not very good at following on the back end of that conversation and really if we do then um, I honestly do believe you can get leverage from all the processes and all the work that's gone in to getting, if you like, to that point of then maybe needing to draw on consequences. And remember, consequences also apply to good things as well. And always make sure if you've promised somebody something or you've said you're going to do something, really, really make sure you do it. So by working together, you can often accomplish more when you than you than when you work with an individual. So we're going to be looking at um, this is the mine shop. So we pay a license fee to mine shop an Australian um, company that have over 140 business problem solving skills uh, tools which help us be very very skillful and every single thing we do is we ask where are we now 
um, where do we want to be and then how are we going to get there and usually when there's a problem people jump into how straight away and they don't stop and think actually this is an opportunity to say where do we want to be we could rethink our strategy we could actually make some improvements we could actually stop doing some stuff we could um you know um maybe put in some training or maybe shuffle some staff around before we go uh, again so we always look at where are we now where do we want to be and then how are we going to get there and going into the second half i'm going to be looking more at that and also i'm going to be looking at a gap analysis before we get there because change has come about now where how gives us opportunity to reassess so the first thing that you need to do when you're reassessing is look at where the energy is and the way that you can do that is by using a tool called the gap analysis and that's identifying all the things that you want as a business what's important to you and then looking at where you are now and then benchmarking that against the ideal 